one can say that the Japanese achieved that. They had to make some tough decisions and swallow their national pride. Rather than design every component from scratch, Japan would learn from other countries' mistakes and take the best of their technologies. Like most rockets, the H-2A is a multi-stage rocket that uses a series of engines to propel it into space. Each stage has its own engines and fuel source. Once the fuel's burnt up, that stage of the rocket is jettisoned to reduce weight and mass. Some rockets need up to four stages to ensure the satellite is injected precisely into the correct orbit. But to reduce the number of parts and keep costs down, the Japanese opted for a two-stage design for the H-2A. Since the early 1970s, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries have been building rockets for the Japanese space program. For the H-2A, they must completely redesign the H-2 rocket and build a much simpler, more reliable and cost-efficient version. With every rocket, more than 90% of the total weight is made up of the fuel. The rocket itself makes up just 10% of the weight at liftoff. So there's not much room to move as they look for ways to overhaul the basic structure. Mitsubishi's engineers focus on four key areas to convert the doomed H-2 into a simpler, more reliable rocket. First, they make the electronics smaller and lighter. On the second stage, the propellant tank and engine are safer and more efficient. On the first stage, they reduce the number of engine parts and they create an all-in-one solid rocket booster. Almost every component on the H-2 is modified. On the engines, they reduce welded parts and tubing, potential weak points that can fail under pressure. All the time, Mitsubishi are looking to cut costs in any way they can. For example, uh, copper tubing uh, replaced steel tubing. Uh, that might sound a rather trivial example, uh, but copper tubing is clearly much less expensive than stainless steel tubing. One of their most stunning achievements is the body section that joins the H-2A's first and second stages. In the old days of the H-2, we used to have a section that was made from lots and lots of small aluminum parts. But from the H-2A onwards, we decided to use carbon composite components. On the old H-2, this interstage section was built from 1,200 components. By employing advanced carbon fiber materials, the H-2A only requires 140, an 88% reduction. That means fewer parts that can break or fail and less time in construction. This also reduces the H-2A's weight by 200 kilograms, which represents a huge saving in launch costs. Mitsubishi's focus on designing a safer, more reliable and cheaper launch vehicle is paying off. The H-2A has 20% fewer parts than its predecessor. It's also engineered to lift heavier payloads and at half the launch cost. Now, perhaps it's ready to take on the rest of the world. Rocket development in Asia, including Japanese rockets, is improving. I think that rockets have their own characteristics among different cultures and nations. In the case of Japan, we are focusing on the reliability of rockets and the engines. Standing 53 meters in height, Japan's H-2A rocket looks every bit a modern marvel of precision engineering. And on paper, the H-2A ranks with some of the best Russian, American and French rockets in its lifting power and payload capacity. 
Teiki Matsumura, a senior engineer with JAXA, is proud of the H2A's capabilities. The H2A series is the most significant rocket in Japan. The rocket weighs about 300 tons. Cars weigh about 1.5 tons. So it's equivalent to about 200 cars. So we're talking about 200 cars suddenly flying up into the air. That's the kind of power that we're talking about. But the big question is, will it work? The H-2A now faces its most dramatic test. Two launches in 25 days. Each launch will carry a payload that has taken thousands of man hours and millions of dollars to build. In a world where communications, travel and understanding global climate change all depend on satellites, both have vital roles to play. Flight 8 will carry the four-ton ALOS, the advanced land-observing satellite. ALOS has three sensors. PRISM, which uses three sets of optical systems to measure precise land elevation. AVNIR-2, which maps land cover and vegetation in visible and near-infrared spectral bands. And PALSAR, a microwave radar instrument that can acquire images during both day and night under any weather conditions. Meanwhile, H-2A Flight 9 is set to launch the heaviest payload in Japan's aerospace history. The MT-SAT-2 satellite weighing in at 4.65 tons. There's a lot riding on its successful launch. MT-SAT-2 will form part of a new air traffic control and communication system. The system is designed to improve air traffic congestion and safety throughout the Asia-Pacific region enhancing communications, navigation, and aircraft tracking. MTSAT-2 is also a weather satellite. It will capture, collect, and deliver meteorological images and data for the Asian region. Launching the four and a half ton MTSAT-2 into orbit will be a critical test for the H-2A. What this weight means is that it's pretty much operating at the top end of the capacity of the rocket. So we're really pushing what the rocket can do. If it works, we're going to prove a lot about what we've got here. Japan needs both launchers, flights 8 and 9, to go without a hitch if they want to make their mark in the high-flying world of commercial payload launches. Success means they can confidently join the big league. Failure will relegate them to the second division. In the high-stakes business of commercial satellite launches, reliability and adaptability to the needs of clients are all important. Competition is fierce in a market that is experiencing the same pressures as commercial airlines. To cater to their clients' needs, JAXA have spent years developing nose cones or fairings which they can customize to take a range of different sized payloads. Kiyohei Yoshida is a JAXA engineer who helps prepare these multi-million dollar cargoes. This is a fairing for the H-2A rocket. The main purpose of the fairing is to reduce the wind resistance on the rocket going out of the atmosphere into space. The satellite is housed inside the structure. We do change the design of the fairing depending on its mission, its size, its payload, how many satellites we want to put inside at the same time, and so on. The successful launch of the ALOS and the MTSAT-2 satellites depends on the new H-2A. Every component must work flawlessly. By reducing the number of parts by 20%, engineers hope they've eliminated the risk of failure. Imagine if one in every 10 commercial airline flights ended in failure. 
That's more or less what's happened with rockets over the last 50